So I'm Laura. Thank you, everybody, for um, your time and attention this afternoon. I'm just going to really go through my life events, very informal talk, kind of talking about how I got to where I am today. In retrospect, looking back, I would say there's three fundamental um, areas that drove me to where I am now. The first was kind of overall I knew I liked science, right? Kind of have to know an area that you like and are passionate about. Serendipity which I'm sure a lot of us ended up where we're at by that, and personal life circumstances. So looking back, those are the three main influencers that got me to where I am. I'm from southwest Kansas, very small town in liberal Kansas, five minutes from Oklahoma border, um, I think 30 minutes from um, Colorado border. Uh, growing up, I knew I loved science. Um, coming from a small town, I didn't have a lot of exposure to really what was out there, so I always knew I wanted to be a medical doctor. Did I really want to? I don't know. But when I thought of science, that's kind of what came to mind coming from the small town, and that's kind of what I thought I was going to be the entire time growing up, to be very honest. Um, I left to college going pre-med, ended my first year, and also gave birth to my first daughter. So I thought, I really need to think about if medical school is what I want to do. Primary reason was a lot of it was financial at that point in time. So being at the University of Kansas majoring in biology, I started to kind of look around at what my options were. And at the time, pharmacy was something that really stuck out. It's a great area to go into. KU had a great program. And I was always told you would be making great money after. I mean, I'm being very honest in what I'm saying to you guys. So um, I started looking into that, took the PCAT, and thought about pharmacy school. Then I got the application, the acceptance, and looked at the cost of pharmacy school and realized this may not be what I'm going to do. Um, being part of the School of Pharmacy, I ended up being in contact with someone in the pharmacology and toxicology department at KU, and we talked very briefly, and they said, do you know that you can get a fellowship, and sometimes you can get paid and get your, you know, get your books and your tuition paid, and I thought, really? So I looked a little bit more into it, and I started reading about the department, and the areas of research, and glutamate fascinated me um, at the time, and I thought, this is great. I will apply just to see kind of what happens. Applied, got a fellowship, full tuition, books, and a stipend, and I thought, this is where I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity. So I went straight from biology undergrad to uh, Department of Pharma Talks at KU. I enrolled into the PhD program. So I started off doing my rotations like everybody else. I went into it thinking I'm going to be out of here six years later with my PhD. Well, along the way, I had gave birth to my second daughter. And, you know, when you're making 20 grand um, and you have two kids, that's not always the best situation. So I realized, I thought at that point, I need to get out and get some work experience. I don't know that I can do this because I went straight from undergrad to there. For this amount of time, I want to get out there. I started just applying. I got onto every engine you can ever think of, Google search. I don't even know what they are now, Monsters. All of those, I put my resume out there. And I ended up finishing up with my master's. I defended that work. <laughs> And at that time, I was getting random requests to do job interviews. I ended up interviewing for a company called PRA Health Sciences. It, they have a phase one and two clinical site here in Lenexa. And I interviewed for a medical research associate level one. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I have a master's. Like, what am I doing here? This has nothing to do with what I studied. And there was no glutamate at all there. It was phase one and phase two trial. And I remember thinking, I went there, and they were like, you know, we're going to pay you this amount of money. And, and I thought, OK. Well, unfortunately, that drove a lot of my decisions, honestly, at the time, and I took it. I wasn't very proud with the title because I thought, oh, you know, um, I was thrown into a lab. I was basically a glorified lab technician, very honestly. Um, I spun down samples that came in from the patients, et cetera. I was there for about four years, and four years I was promoted four times. So I went from medical research associate one to a two to a lab manager wait, to a clinic manager at the end. And um, so that's four promotions within four years. So my point in that is never be too proud to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And it's not always going to be out here. I understand that we all have higher educations. And we think like that gives us a level in. But there's a lot of people out there with higher educations. And there's a lot of people looking for a job. You have to get in there and get experience. And that's the best part. Now, I don't mean go you know, take a job as Jan you know, You know what I mean. Don't underestimate your worth. But at the same time, make sure you're realistic with your expectations. OK? So I took that four years. At the end of four years, I decided I wanted to go back to um, 
school and finish my PhD. Again, another personal decision. My grandfather was dying, and he said he wanted one of his grandchildren to have a, a doctorate degree. And I said, I will, be, I will be your guinea pig. I will do it. So I went back, got accepted to the same program under the same mentor, turned my master's thesis defense into my doctoral work. Um, finished out, did it in two, two and a half years and didn't know where I was going, pretty much like what you guys were thinking. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm time my defense date is scheduled. I still don't have a job. Where am I going? Well, sure enough, I still had contacts that I had kept at PRA, same clinic, and they offered me a senior clinic manager position. And I took it. Why? Because I was about to graduate. I needed money and I needed a job. So I went back to PRA and was there for about another three years. And so I was the director of the clinic by the time that I ended up leaving. So at some point in there, I decided I had had seven years of clinical trial research. It's different, but the same, if that makes any sense. Sometimes life can happen like that. And I started to look at other positions. I realized I need to get other experiences. This is the only job, or the only company that I've worked for. Um, one of my best friends was working for a company called Otsuka Pharmaceuticals. Has anybody ever heard of a medical science liaison, what we do? Basically, our job is to be a clinical and scientific resource for the community. My area is mental health. I'm in the division of neuroscience. The areas that we work on are focus on our schizophrenia, bipolar, um, depression, PBA, autism, PTSD. That's what our products cover. Uh, my friend told me about the job. She said they're looking for someone in Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma. I said I will never get it. I have no background in mental health. And she said, go, apply, you're, um, you're going to get an interview, you have the background, just go. So I went um, to an interview in Princeton, and they gave me 65-slide PowerPoint presentation five days before and said, you will present this to everybody at the end of your 8 to 5 interviewing. So I interviewed with different people, and at the end of the day, I walked into a room with about 40 people and had to present on a product that I had just heard about five days prior. My, so number one, my recommendation is networking, right? I knew someone in the company, and we don't want to admit it. Maybe it frustrates us to admit it, but it is a lot about who you know. If you have an opportunity to network, if you have an opportunity to meet someone, get out there and do it. Your name is in their, their mind. You're, you never know life circumstances. You're going to run into that person again, networking. Number two, confidence. I walked into that room scared as can be. I knew, I felt like I knew nothing about what I was about to talk about. But I showed that confidence, I think now, and that's what I've been told, enough to where I got the position. Okay, so in our jobs, we will never know everything about our job and what there is to learn, right? But it's about how you carry yourself and how confident you are. And when you interview, exude that. And you know, it's okay if you don't know it inside, but don't show that on the outside. I interviewed at PRA so many people so many times, and I can tell you that it's the simplest things that people don't realize are already gonna knock you off an interview. Um, people would walk in late, flip-flops, um, cell phone out. Do uh, you think they're simple, but you'd be surprised at the number of people that actually did these things <laughs> at interviews. So always keep that in mind that you're being watched, and even though there's not that maybe immediate feedback, you have to be respectful when you're in your interviews and show that level of confidence in yourself. And um, I think, again, those are my two main bits, is networking and confidence. It's okay if life doesn't plan out, like you said, a lot of mine, like you think, a lot of mine was serendipity and personal life circumstances that drove me to where I am, but learn to embrace that. And again, networking and confidence are the two biggest assets that I can um, recommend. I think that's it.